My wife's here. This guy's next to her, and he's the guy to raise his hand. Two seats. So he says, that's not the real story. So the race is ready to go, and I'm not going to confront the guy or, you know, not the real story, right? So, okay, so the race is over. The lady's all leaving with her goofy hats and stuff, and the other two couples leave. And I said, I think his name was um, Charles or something like that. And could I ask you what you meant by that? He says, sure. He said, join the military 1966 Communication Signal Corps. And what did you do? He said, we went to Syracuse University. I said, that's my home, Syracuse. I worked right down the street there at Cross Irving Memorial Hospital. I was a painter, carpenter, all through summers of college, and even some of the big, if it wasn't delivering mail for the post office in the winter, I, I was helping doing that. He says, that's not the real, I said, what did you do there? He says, we, we didn't have any short haircuts. We didn't have any uniforms. We had a special part of the campus. We learned Chinese, Russian, and, and, and Vietnamese. You what? He says, yes, we learned all the languages. And then what? He says, we went to Vietnam. He says, where were you? And I says, uh, the Central Coast, Central Highlands. He says, Highway 1 North to Duck Fall, Bong Sung, and Highway West to An Khe and Pleiku. He says, you know, he says, hell yeah. He says, we, we intercepted messages like you're talking in your cell phone today when you were going to be ambushed. I says, you what? He says, we knew when you were going to be ambushed. And not only that, we knew when Marine Corps LZs were going to be hit, Army LZs and other things are going, what the hell did you do with them? He said, we told upper echelon, colonels, generals, everything's going to happen. They said it didn't happen. I'm crying. I said, you knew we lost 42 guys in the transfer, in the total year I was there, September 7th, 42 soldiers killed. And you knew all that? He says, Tom, I've lived with this for 48 years. I feel the same way you do, okay? They knew this shit was going to hit, and, and they didn't do anything about it. If you know that there's such and such outpost or the convoys, and it was always ambush alley, all you got to do is bring some of these uh, phantom jets with their napalm and all the other, and, and just wipe the whole damn area to hell. Didn't happen. Didn't happen. So, and, and that's, so that's the first guy. That's May of 19, or 2016. <coughs> Excuse me. And I just met another guy two years ago down at the Severna Park American Legion, and I was with him this past Sunday. We had the Irish festival and everything. He was there with his wife, Mary. She's 100% Irish, and he walks across. He's got his... Uh, his uh, senior corps hat on, and he's walking across to me, and every, he gives me a nice salute. I get up and salute him, and he told me the same thing. And the guy I just told you about that I, I saw yesterday or whatever, the guy never had a military shirt on or anything, and my wife just got to know the guy because he's got relatives that went to school, my wife. And I, I was talking to him yesterday. When I'm leaving, he was senior corps too. And down in Tonsonut, okay, everything I just told you, he did the same thing. He said, we intercepted messages and all that. That was, and I said, I, I've had four guys, four super Vietnam guys, okay, and Herb, the, the guy you, t you talked to the first day that he had to leave and everything because of doing blood work, he, he said the same thing, so, but. Was but, that guy CIA? No, they were all just, so they were just, you know, um, they meant signal cord, communication. They intercepted us up, just like we're talking, they, they, they got the messages, they tell upper Ashley, hey, the S is going to hit the fan and everything. Back in, um, in December of 67, I got RON, remain overnight in Pleiku, up in the Highlands, okay? Um, for some reason, they couldn't get our trailers offloaded and everything, so we had to stay overnight, okay? So, um, I go in, there's another, uh, see with the officers and everything, they're in, in tents and, you know, now custom of what I'm, I'm, I'm staying and everything. 
and there's one lieutenant, his name was David Ralph Wilson, nice guy from outside Pittsburgh and or outside Philadelphia. And he went to military school, okay? Well, I had some bad, bad communication with, with these military guys, especially from the South and everything, when I was at Fort Eustis, Virginia in 65. They treated us, you know, regular college guys like dirt. They thought they were George Patton and everything. They thought, you know, they were king. We all had to play war games. We all had to take places, okay, you know, take your turn and all that. And they treated us like, but this guy was not like that at all. Just a first class person, okay. Um, a uh, sports guy, and, and I told him I'm, I'm a car guy, okay, race car guy, okay, drag race guy, the whole business and everything. We had a, a great, had a couple of beers, go to bed, go. So the big thing, and, and, and uh, with him, he drove the Jeep up there. And I says, could I ask you why you're driving the Jeep? I says, I says we got orders from your company, your battalion, the group, Officers are not to drive the Jeep. You're to operate the radio and everything. He said, we're up here, we're all by ourselves. We don't have any brass or anything, okay? We do what we want, and he says, if, if something really happens, and those guys are the ones that really saw a lot of the, the ambushes and a lot of the other stuff that happened, because they would go north to Cantoon and Docto and other places, so. And I says, okay, all right, that's fine. So, you know, I, I'd see him on in the road, okay, that month in early January, and he'd be driving the Jeep, and he waved to me and everything, right? So anyways, it's January 31st to start at 10, and we did not know, okay? So I'm coming back from Pleiku, empty. He's coming out of on K, going west, okay? And he's loaded. So we pass each other, and I'm in the Jeep waving over the top, and he's driving, and he's waving to me and everything, and you know, we all, so we all pass each other, and we get going, and we're up into ambush alley and everything and all that, and, and my, my, the rear sergeant says, something's going on up in Mang Yang Pass. And he says, he says, I think there, there's got to be an ambush or something up there. He can hear mortars and, and stuff and everything. And so we got our convoy and we got to get uh, on K. So we get to on K and everything. And here's the military police, block the road. Sierra, the shit has hit the fan. There, there's no big vacation. There's no holiday. All hell is breaking loose across the whole country. So, oh my God, I said, you know, I remember the mound yards and everything and, and everything. So, so we go in, we're stuck in NK that night. So about eight, nine o'clock, at least that, I said, I, I, I guess some operation people and maybe military police come in and they said, uh, the convoy got ambushed up in Mang, Mang Yang Pass. And, and they said, everybody got through except for Lieutenant Wilson, the convoy commander. And, and I said, uh, what about his, his driver who is the, pa and, the, and his machine gunner? The driver's okay, the machine gunner lost part of his foot and everything and everything, but, and they said, Lieutenant Wilson is in the Jeep at the bottom of Mang Yang Pass. I says, what? He said, he's in the Jeep in the bottom of Mang Yang Pass. And I said, guys, um, we gotta go get Lieutenant Wilson. <laughs> so who's, who's with me? Everybody stood up raise their hand, whatever you need, we're here. So I said, okay. So we got three gun trucks and two gun trucks and a quad 50 and, and one of the other sergeants. So and an operation people said, we will let artillery, one of the artillery units know when you're going to be the, the bottom man in pass so they can throw some flares up because now it's going to be 10 o'clock or whatever. So I said, okay, fine, that's good and everything. So in the gun trucks, we have two M60s. Well, I got three or four extra guys, some of them, my truck drivers. They said, we'll go, we'll bring our, and I don't think we had, then we might have had M16s by then. So anyways, so we're there, and, and all I'm thinking, I'm, I'm praying, I said, I got 50, 60 guys, okay, and we're going up there, and I said, is the Jeep booby-trapped, okay? 
they already got the range and everything because they already hit it with a mortar. Okay, they, they hit the Jeep with a mortar and everything. So we get there, and I, I, I told the sergeant, I said, as soon as we get there, get everybody turned around and get the heck out of here. So here's the Jeep on the side of the road, and I go over. And uh, a, a Jeep, when you sit in a Jeep, right next to you is the gas cap. And right next to the gas cap, there's a hole as big as five inches, okay, perfectly, just like somebody took a hole. The mortar came through and hit underneath. And here's Lieutenant Wilson behind the steering wheel. He is nothing below his kneecap. He's got limited, nothing here, okay? And he's welded to the seat. The Jeeps all have metal in the seat and everything after the, the, the cloth is all gone. And I try to pick him up, and I can't. So one of the, the guys said, here's a, here's a rag. So I, I got the rag, and I pried him out. I had to pry him off of the seat, okay, because he was welded to the seat. So I pick him up, and I can still feel it. He's all hot. I mean, he's, he's completely burned. And, and I, the first words I, I saw him, I said, his poor parents, they won't know anything. And so I, I finally get him up, and I, I can't. I take him over, I put him in a sleeping bag, and we put him in this trailer we had and everything, and we sat down, we came back. We came back and everything, and you know, they, they took care of his body and on Kay and everything, and I, 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 I never even thought of it at the time and everything, but I, I should have got everybody's name for what they did, but we just, this is what you did. You, you took care of things like that. To, you know, you don't leave the guy behind, you, you, no matter what time, it, by the time you got back, it probably had to be 11, 11.30, and pitch dark, we just, you know, the artillery never came, okay, never got no flares, no nothing, they didn't do anything, okay, so we made it back, now one shot was fired, and I said, so many Hail Marys and thank you for all the guys getting back, because I, I just said, you know, we could have lost a lot of people. I mean, Charlie's right up there in the hill. They got all these tunnels and crap and everything. So anyways, um, we, uh, um, we uh, in my American Legion, um, a couple years ago, um, we got a real good officer, and he became the, the district commander here. And he said something about, you know, you can pull up somebody's name on the wall, the Vivian on wall. And, and I said, how about Lieutenant David Ralph Wilson? And he pulled it up and he goes like this. He says, Tom, there's a reserve unit in Orlando, Florida in his honor. Uh, he not only had the reserve, he won a silver star. And how did you know him? And I said, I'm the guy, my men and I, we retrieved his body and brought him home. So see when I go to Florida every February, whatever. So I, I called up there and, 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 and they, they said, General Espinad, who's the commanding officer, would love to see you, talk to you. So my brother-in-law and I, we go to the, the reserve unit. I got pictures of 160,000 square foot building, 160,000 spectacular, home of the Army, Navy, and Marine Corps reserve unit in Orlando, Florida. So we knock on the door and here's this young uh, military off, uh, military guard, a, a lady. Uh, you got you guys here to sign up? Yeah, Silver. Yeah, we're here to sign up. And I said, I'm here to see General Espinot. And and she could ask what reference. I said, Yeah, my, my men and I we're the ones that retrieved Lieutenant Wilson's body in Vietnam on, on January thirty first, sixty eight. And she goes like this. And there's three other military. MPs, okay, leaving, and there's, and they heard the, and they're going like this here. 